Hello everyone. This is a video tutorial for Embedded Systems Module 6. These are the main topics in this module. In this video, we will briefly discuss about EDLC approaches. We will cover these points through this video. Introduction to EDLC and its needs in short. There are four models in EDLC approaches. They are linear or waterfall model, iterative or incremental or fountain model, prototyping or evolutionary model, and spiral model. And lastly, we will discuss some previous year questions. Introduction EDLC is an analysis, design, implementation based standard problem solving approach for embedded systems development. Analysis, design and implementation are the three common concepts or phases in EDLC approach. They are again categorized as need, conceptualization, analysis, design, development and testing, deployment, support, upgrade, retirement. But mainly these are the three phases. Firstly, analysis. Analysis involves understanding what product needs to be developed. That is, when the customer specifies his requirements, the customer requirements should be understood. That is, analyzed. Design involves what approach to be used to build the product. That is, how the product needs to be developed. That idea or the design should be built. Implementation is developing the product by realizing the design. The design should be analyzed or the design should be taken into consideration and then the implementation should be carried out. Need for EDLC EDLC is essential for understanding the scope and complexity of the work involved in embedded systems development. So basically, what the customer requires is a complex problem to the developer. So that means is to be divided into phases as categorized in EDLC and solved to give out an efficient solution. It is used for developing any embedded product. EDLC defines interaction and activities among various groups of a product development phase. That is, with each phase, there is interaction between the customer and developer. And also there are many activities happening during these phases. Example, project management, system design, etc. The term modeling in embedded product development lifecycle refers to the interconnection of various phases involved in the development of an embedded product. That is, modeling means all the phases are sequenced and linked as per their role and importance and developing process is thus carried out. First model, linear or waterfall model, mostly adopted in olden systems. Each phase executed in sequence. Also, because each phase is executed in sequence, it is also called linear sequential life cycle model. The waterfall model was first process model to be introduced. It is very simple and easy to understand and use. Flow is unidirectional with output of one phase serving as input to the next phase. Flow is unidirectional in the sense these are the phases in the waterfall model. So after the need is analyzed, then the conceptualization phase, then analysis, it is carried out in an order. If after the analysis any needs are specified, it does not go back to the need phase. That is, in only one direction the process is carried out. All activities are well documented, gives insight to the next phase. All activities in each phase are well documented so that 
it gives a good insight to the next phase developing so that the developer gets a good view of what was done in the previous phase risk analysis done once in every development that is once the product is developed only then the risk analysis is done that is throughout the development only once the risk analysis is done working product available at end of development phase after the development of the product the working product will be available to the customer used for small projects this type of software development model is basically used for the projects which is small and there are no uncertain requirements so this is basically the structure of a linear or waterfall model merits product development is rich in terms of documentation easy project management and good control over cost and schedule as we discussed in each phase there is lot of act activities taking place so the documentation is rich easy project management because it is unidirectional and all the requirements are considered so there is easy project management and good control over cost and schedule there is no going back from one phase to the previous phase hence there is good control over cost best suited where requirements are well defined within the scope and there are no change requests as we discussed the requirements are primarily taken from the customer therefore in between if the uh, customer request for some uh, changes in the requirements it is not acceptable that is the requirements should be well defined demerits bug identification are not done immediately and fixes are done at the end of maintenance so after all the phases are completed for the development only at the maintenance phase the bugs are identified and fixed assumes analysis can be made without design and implementation so even after design and implementation analysis should be done but here it is not done next model is iterative or incremental or fountain model it follows sequence evaluate and cycle back through and conduct analysis in iterative model the iterative process starts with a simple implementation of a small set of software requirements which iteratively enhances the evolving versions until the complete system is implemented and ready to be deployed here they are specifying about cycle back that is even if the product development moves to the next phase if the customer requests for some requirements or specifications in between some phase it can cycle back through the to the previous phase and hence the cycle can be continued for example this is the structure for iterative model here the customer specifies his needs all these phases are carried out and at the deployment phase the customer is handed over the product if then the customer needs any changes or there are any requirements more to the customer again the phases are carried out in cycle 2 starting from analysis design deployment development and testing deployment etc so this cycle continues until the customer is satisfied that is we can say it is a cascaded series of linear or waterfall model it is a superset of waterfall model there are two phases in this model functions identified that is functions are identified that is the customer requirements are given it is built by the developer and deployed to the customer that is the first release second phase contains the requirements are 
taken again from the customer. If there are any fixes, the fixes are made. Modifications are made and again finally released to the customer. Another approach to incremental model is that overlap or development cycles overlap. Meaning that the subsequent iterative incremental cycle may begin before the completion of previous cycle. Advantages Good development cycle feedback that is the customer can at any phase specify his requirements and the developer can go to the previous phase and again carry out the following steps that is the phase. Each cycle is maintenance phase for pre previous cycle. That is, changes in feature and functionalities can be easily incorporated during the development and hence more responsive to changing user needs. Provides working product model. At the end of the development, there is a finalized working product model given to the customer. Risks are minimized easily. Project management and testing is simpler. Product development can be stopped at any stage with minimum working product. That is, it generates a working software quickly and early during the software lifecycle. Disadvantages Extensive review requirement at each cycle. To ensure that the process flow is going in the right direction and validates the effort during the phase. Training requirement for each new deployment at the end of each development cycle. As we said, the customer requirements are flexible. So after each development, there is a training required to be done. It becomes hectic and also complex for the developer not suitable for small projects. Examples for this model Rapid Application Development Next model Prototyping or Evolutionary Model Similar to the iterative model as it carries out the same phases in sequence. But here also the product is developed in multiple cycles that is after each phase, it can go and cycle back through the previous phase. The difference being that it produces more refined prototype of the product at each cycle. That is, unlike the iterative model, there is a prototype of the product generated and it is delivered to the customer. Typically, online systems Web interfaces have a very um, high amount of interaction with end users and are best suited for a prototype model. On development of first prototype, it is sent to the customer for evaluation and gives feedback. Feedbacks are based on shortcomings, improvements, etc. That is, a prototype is a blueprint of the finalized product. So the customer is given the prototype. And then, if he is not satisfied, he evaluates the product and then gives feedback about the product. If any iterations needed, it is made and delivered to the customer. Lot of customer interaction needed for this model. That is, in between, the customer requirements may change and that requires customer and developer interaction. This is the prototype model. Firstly, as we can see, the customer specifies his requirements. The requirements are planned. And then a primary design is built, which is then sent to the prototyping phase. This is the prototyping phase, where a primary prototype or the initial prototype is built. It the prototype is delivered to the customer for evaluation. If there are any changes, the feedback is given to the 
developer. Then again, a refined requirement is delivered and a planning is done. Then a refined design is again created with the next prototype that is delivered to the customer. Again, if any changes evaluated and then again the feedback is given. So this process continues until the customer is satisfied with his final product. Then the output of this model is the final product what the customer needs. So there are four phases in this model. Analysis and planning, design, prototyping and the customer where the final product is delivered. Follows the approach, requirement def definition, prototype development, prototype evaluation and requirements refining. So basically these are the approaches used here. The requirements are specified, prototype is developed, the customer evaluates the prototype and then again if any refining needs to be done, the requirements are refined. Advantages. Product development can start with a bare minimum set of requirements. That is, in this model, there is flexible customer requirement changes. That is, with a minimum set of requirements, the product development can start. And within the phases, if the customer needs any changes, the requirement set can be increased and then the product can be developed accordingly. So, with a minimum set of requirements also, the product can be started to develop. Risks are well under control. Most popular best approach. So, due to the customer flexible requirement change, the risks are taken under control. Drawbacks. Increased product management. Increased configuration management activities. So basically, the main thing is that due to many cycles, this process takes down to many cycles. So it leads to implementing and then repairing way of building systems. So there are a lot of increased management activities taking place. So it becomes a drawback. Not recommended for projects involving upgradation of existing product. That is, in this model, a prototype is made. That is, a new requirement set is given to the developer. So, a new product requirement is taken. That is, with an existing product, we cannot specify some requirements on behalf of the customer and then change the product. A newly product requirements are specified from the customer and then develop. Next and the last model is spiral model. It combines linear and prototyping models. It starts with project definition and traverses through all phases of EDLC through multiple phases. So these two points are similar to the linear and prototyping models. That is, it traverses through all the EDLC phases. But the main activities done here is, firstly, determine objectives, alternatives and constraints. Evaluate alternatives, identify and resolve risks. Develop and test and plan. So here, first phase being the objective, alternative and constraints. So firstly, what needs to be done? What needs to be achieved is first identified in this phase. Next, the evaluation is done. That is, if there are any alternatives to be identified, if there is any risk to be mitigated, all these are done in this phase. A prototype is created, then the design phase, then the customer is provided with the design and he is 
he verifies the product and then validates it best it is best for complex embedded products and where requirements change from customer side so as the prototyping model it is flexible with the requirement changes now the advantages efficient requirement analysis risk planning and mitigation so the main principle here through this points is it conveys is that the main principle of the spiral model is risk handling and customer evaluation based on strength weakness risk etc so as we said the principle is risk planning or risk handling so the customer evaluates the product or the prototype through based on its strength its weakness risk handling capability etc product development on agreement with the customer yeah of course the product needs to be validated by the customer the customer validates the product so only the final product is assured by the customer if he or she is satisfied with the product disadvantages can be costly model to use because of the multiple cycles it generates it becomes costly model to use highly dependent on risk analysis phase as we said the main principle of spiral model is risk handling so if there are any risk that cannot be mitigated it highly affects this model or any phase in this model now some previous year questions mainly asked in the question papers first one explain the various steps involved in the development of an embedded system using waterfall model so here we can specify the phases involved in the waterfall model as it is unidirectional and we can explain the phases like next uh, needs conceptualization etc and then some we can uh, mention some features its advantages drawbacks and how the process is all carried out name and explain various phases of edlc and also discuss its modeling so basically through this video we discuss about the modeling phases of edlc are more described or briefed in the edlc phases video so through this video what we learn is that firstly we learned in short edlc and its needs to how it is essential in development of an embedded product next we dealt with edlc approaches as to how the phases are sequenced and used according to the product also approaches are divided as linear iterative prototype and spiral models each model has its significant feature that is applied to customer requested requirements and built in according to their needs from linear to spiral efficiency increases and each model includes some features of the other as improvement in order to make best uh, profit out of product what you do development life cycle is very important to build a reliable product of best quality functionality and to release your product in right time so it is very necessary to consider the points like the uh, quality should be maintained functionality should be taken care of and the product should be released at the right time so edlc will make things easy for all the product developments for sure thank you